Shalom, shalom, find the shield, welcome again to the rock. I'm just gonna show you something. I'm over here right now. One of my grow areas. And right here you can see I'm growing burgundy okra. And it's right next to the squash garden that you see the rows up there. I harvested, well, we harvested most of the squash out. <laughs> uh, we're still working on the rest of it. Uh, and then we have some peppers over there, uh, some melons over there. Um, we harvested most of the squash out, pulled the plants out, and now we're growing greens. Right here we have green beans, right on top of the okra. And then we have more okra up there. But the whole point of this video is this. If you produce your own food, your land can become your grocery store. You know, it's funny. When I tell the children, hey, go grocery shopping. They'll come out here with the little bags, the little uh, containers, and they'll harvest literally their own food. Stop listening to my video. Pay attention to get them chickens. Get them chickens. Oh, okay. <laughs> you get them all? The, okay. Go over here spying on my video. <laughs> Trying to pretend like they ain't listening. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but I tell them to come out here and go shopping and they'll come out here literally and harvest their own salads. It's amazing. Dandelions and purslane and clovers and lettuce and mustards and spinaches and amaranth and all different types of greens. It's almost like Olive Garden. They just get to make their own. If they like more of one thing, they can do it. If they like more of another thing, they can harvest that. And it's amazing because I look at the joy in their face that they get to eat things, not, not just that they that are good for them, but that they like. I can grow it. I can take the time and grow it. Some of them like, I think they all taste the same, but the snake green beans or the yard-long green beans, I think they taste the same as the regular green beans, but they know the difference, and they like them. It's awesome that they get to harvest their own food. It's awesome that they get to eat from what they grow. Like this green bean garden right here, they grew it. Uh -oh. They grew it. This is what I'm working on right now. I'm gonna be rowing it all the way down. You see those rows up there, all the way down to the bottom. But most of these squashes are done. They yielded quite a bit of squash, and, and now their time's up, and we're trying, we're growing another uh, fall squash. We're growing some fall squash just in a different part. Look, okay, we got peppers right here. We got different melons. More peppers. I mean, y'all, it's just really blessed. I mean, we eat a lot of peppers. We use a lot of peppers uh, for the different foods. These different types of melons. And we have more peppers. These are uh, uh, cayenne peppers. And the sisters know how to make a really good uh, dewormer for our goats using this and our ginger. Let's see if I can walk over to the ginger area. <sighs> it's been a busy day today. But everybody's always growing. Everybody's whole family. Everybody's putting something in the soil. Everybody gets to eat the fruit. And there's something about to be said about when you get to eat the fruit. Look at that. That yard long green bean. I'm sure somebody's gonna come and cannibalize it. Eat it. Swiss chard. I didn't even plant this. This is self seeded. It's coming back again. The turmeric, turmeric's going great. With that ginger, that's what we mix with our cayenne peppers and get a, uh, that's what they use to get their dewormer. There's some more passion fruit. Look at that, look at those flowers. Let me show you the fruit. It's growing everywhere. It's growing everywhere, hallelujah. 
But when you grow your own food, passion fruit, literally it's growing everywhere. Well, when you grow your own food and you teach your children to have a love for it, they will. Look at these peppers coming in. Here's that Malabar spinach. I've had a lot of people ask, what does it look like? I swore I showed it in my videos. This is Malabar spinach growing on a bed frame trellis. <laughs> we just made the bed into, here's more passion fruit, into a V. But they'll, they like this. They love them. Um, they love themselves some uh, Malabar spinach. All these peppers. The point of this video is just to kind of encourage you. You know, think of how much money people spend a year on things like healthy elderberries. People spend a fortune on elderberries every single year. Dried elderberries, dehydrated elderberries, elderberry uh, uh, syrups. Why not grow your own elderberries? Why not propagate your own elderberries and then grow them? Why not that? Here's some green beans. This is one of my trellises. Green beans. I didn't uh, do really well. I didn't focus enough on my um, vining green beans. I did a lot of bush green beans this year, and it was, man, we have a lot. But it's a hot day. I just want to shoot a little video for y'all to kind of encourage y'all. Keep at it. Growing, nothing beats growing your own food. Nothing beats Every time you eat something that comes from your garden, you are breaking away from this system. Every time you grow a tree, these are some fruit trees. I don't know which ones these are, but they're fruit trees. Every time you grow a tree, every time you plant a garden, this is a, that's lavender, that's rosemary. Every time you do this, you break away. So I drew some artichokes. See how tall they're getting. That's going to provide a lot of food for this family. And we like them. Some people don't like them. We do. We make our own mint. Our mint teas. This is all uh, uh, sweet mint right here. I think it's thyme, I think. Oregano, lemon balm. And these are, we've already harvested all this. Chives, uh, peppermint, I think. All different types of herbs that the sisters like. We have wormwood and singing nettle, licorice over there, aloe vera over there. These are just all the different types of herbs that they use for their hair or whatever medicinal properties they and know about them, they grow them. More mint. Mint. We eat a lot of mint here. Mint, mint, as you can see. Mint. And all of this is chocolate mint, sweet mint, peppermint, uh, spearmint, all the different types of mints. We have more peppers. You see, we cleared off most of our gardens. And we're going to be, I plant green beans here usually what i do is i'll plant my green beans and i'll plant uh greens right next to them so we actually plant this whole garden in and we're just waiting for a rain right now got what's left of our carrots from what we've eaten hallelujah some okra that volunteered these are just some of the gardens and, th and, and this this video is more of just an inspiration trying to be trying to encourage you trying to encourage you to break away Trying to encourage you to grow your own food. It doesn't have to be a shit is the fan garden. All it has to do is you wanting to break away. Wanting to separate yourself. Wanting to come out of her. That's all it has to be. And if you focus on that and that becomes your drive to live agriculturally. To try to become more dependent on Yah and less dependent. Pot, pot. You're okay. And less dependent on the system. My son just fell in the... <laughs> we have a little tote of water. 
and he was playing and just fell in it. So if you become less dependent on the system and more dependent on y'all's ways, I'll tell you, you'll be in a better position than you will be next year, the year after that. You have to remember, food shortages are still coming. As much as, you know, not everybody's focusing on, focusing on it anymore, you also understand that there's a shortage in, you know, in the West, water. Farms, farmers are letting lots of their gardens go to waste. So what is that going to mean for food prices? What is that going to mean for your wallet? But if you grow your own food as much as you can, you can mitigate that. You can save yourself and your family. And it does, again, it doesn't have to be some shit hits the fan thing. It just has to be you wanting to break away from what you see. I don't live this because I'm some, you know, Super Mario Brothers. I got the fireballs and I'm a big Mario prepper. This is the, li the life that our people lived in the book. And that's enough motivation for me. Bless y'all. I'm going to get back to work. I'm tired. So that's why I'm kind of rambling in this video. <laughs> Shalom.